entrepreneur that wants to register a company with one million share capital who does not even have the capital. If you approach CAC directly, the total amount he's going to spend for everything, including stamp duty, will not be more than 30,000 naira. We all know this. He's paying CAC 10,000 naira as filing fee for one million. Because he will require certified true copy of his documents to be able to open a bank account and deal with other third parties. He pays 7,000 for the CTC. For the one million, he pays 7,500 as stamp duty. That comes up to 25,000. To print memo and articles from a roadside business center, which most of our professional colleagues are doing because they don't do this in their offices. For three copies of this memo, you pay less than a thousand naira. For a set of forms, you pay 500 naira. To reserve an M, you pay 500 naira. So how much does all this amount come up to? 27,000. But if he is going through a chartered accountant or a lawyer, depending on the standing of that lawyer, what is the minimum amount he will charge him for his professional services? Let's ask ourselves. I'm not saying a lawyer, a lawyer can charge any amount. He's a professional. You don't have control over that. He may decide, depending on the standing, we've seen people that charge 150,000 naira to register a company with one million. Our target are small entrepreneurs. We are lawyers too. When we leave this work, We'll, we'll, we'll go back to the field, but we have to be realistic. Somebody does not, does not even have the capital. You are collecting 100,000 naira from him to register a company. Is that fair? When you can open a window for that person to do his own registration directly. This is our target. We are not targeting professionals because we are also professionals. And the global practice, the practice worldwide is you have a window for people that want to do their registration directly. You don't exclude them. So why should Nigeria be different? We are competing with other countries. Why should Nigeria be different? Why should we insist that in Nigeria, in Nigeria we must use professionals? When in Ghana, you can walk into a registry and register your company. In UK, you don't need a lawyer to do that. They don't even have requirement for CO1. So we are not targeting you, my learned friend. But we have to be realistic. And if we are discriminatory in our own charges, maybe, maybe these complaints wouldn't have come up. Because we've seen situations where people were made to deposit the one million before registering a company by professionals. I'm serious. We have investigated so many cases. I can cite so many cases for you. People had collected the entire one million under the guise of depositing the money with CAC when it is not true. We exploit people's ignorance. These are ethical issues anyway. And, and unfortunately, the person involved may not know the right approach to get redress. Because if he, has, if he reported this matter to the professional bodies, they will take up this matter with the professionals. But the bottom line is, we have to be realistic. And we are competing with the world. We cannot afford to be different. So we have opened our windows. The issue you mentioned about secretary is a requirement of law that every company must have a secretary. But the law did not say that a private small company must have a lawyer or a chartered accountant or a chartered, as, as a state secretary. The only requirement that a, the, the secretary to the company must be a lawyer, a chartered accountant, or a chartered secretary is limited to public companies. A private company can appoint anybody you can appoint your house girl if you think she can. Yes, and she, she will have access to CSC to file your papers, provided you have filed notice of her appointment with us. So post incorporation activities, after the registration, post incorporation activities are supposed to be done by the secretary to the company. And once that secretary is in our record, he has access to our premises. He can walk in and do his filings for the company. So there is no hindrance. Nobody says post incorporation can only be done through professionals. It's not true. And what is the big deal about increasing share capital? 
we have frogs. Most of the people that are, even the professionals are being increased. Do they actually drop anything these days? They go to business centers and they, they regenerate and just change the particulars. Anybody that has that is literal, that, that, that has sufficient, little education, will be able to do this. The, strict, the, the truth is, there is nothing legal about company registration. Most of it is clerical. That is the truth. Most of it is clerical. The only area that requires legal is when you are given advice on company matters, which is different from company formation. Anybody can form a company. The only requirement that the law imposes is that you need a lawyer to, 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 to depose to a declaration, which is actually superfluous. Which is superfluous. Because even after a lawyer has deposed to this declaration, as I said earlier, you still find one or two mistakes on, this, on, the, on, the, on the document. And we still query it. We don't issue previous queries. I agreed. There were cases of multiple queries. Or queries in piecemeal. And we're addressing that. Some of our staff, in most cases, when documents are submitted and they are queried, when they are submitted after the query has been answered, it may not necessarily go back to the first person that queried it. Maybe the first person has overlooked one or two issues in the earlier query document. The second person that is looking at it will have to look at it all over again. This is why we have this case of piecemeal query. But we have issued a circular that if a name has been reserved previously and it expires, when it is submitted for revalidation, somebody should not just reject it unless the name there is identical. Because our staff sometimes, they have their own excesses. I'm not, I'm not absorbing anybody. But where you slept over your right, it was reserved for you for 60 days, and it took you 95 days to get your incorporation documents. At that time, maybe somebody else had reserved the same name and had incorporated his own company. We cannot give you the same name again. You have to suggest another name. But for query documents, if the queries documents, if the queries are raised in piecemeal, you have a right to complain, and you can escalate it up to the level of the registrar general. So we are not resting on our oars. The commission was not like this before. We are improving, and we will continuously improve until we get to the right level. 